We're back in Darwin for the last two nights of the Chariots of Thunder series, which uh, should be a lot of fun. And also back in Darwin is Cam Waters. And uh, Cam was away last weekend for the first couple of races of the Chariots of Thunder, racing the supercar. Um, but he's back this weekend uh, in the sprint car. So we're hoping to follow him around tonight with uh, GoPros and, and follow uh, him and his team around the pits. So uh, I used to race karts with Cam. He was super fast then and he's still super fast in everything he does and uh, I'm really interested to see tonight how he goes about his sprint car racing and how he's adapting to the sprint car. Um, it should be a lot of fun. He's he's getting faster and faster every time he goes on track. So it um, should be a good night and uh, let's see what happens. What's your schedule been like over the last week? Um, yeah, come back here Tuesday night um, after yeah, racing at Sandown. Come up here, had some promo stuff when did the Matt Wright experience on the Wednesday, which was a lot of fun, and then yeah, just been hanging to get back in the sprint car. Do you work on the sprint car yourself? Uh, sometimes. When I've got a bit of time, I'll come and give my hand. I was grooving tyres earlier. Um, but yeah, just a little bit harder times with you know the supercar stuff. Yeah. How close do you follow sprint car racing? Uh, yeah, follow quite a lot. I watch it a fair bit in America. Uh, yeah. You know, watch Knoxville. Good yeah. mates with Lockie, so yeah. always I uh, see how he's going. And um, you know, when whenever I'm not racing, I'm you know keeping up to date. Sprint cars are pretty hard to like adapt to. Who's on your crew that has the experience? Um, yeah, sprint cars are pretty hard. They're pretty unique beast. Um, you know, I've got Lindsay Trotter who's you know, been around Speedway a long time, so yep. he's helped me quite a lot. And um, you know, I've had a, a fair few people from you know, different teams and whatnot helping us a little bit as well. So, you know, Lockie, uh, James McFadden, Dave McFadden. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of everyone. I'm sure there's other people I've missed as well, but um, yeah, the Speedway community's been pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like you really enjoy it, uh, apart from your full-time job, I guess. How serious is spring car racing for you? Um, yeah, it's pretty serious. I'm, I'm loving it but I don't do anything just to make up the numbers. So, you know, the first few years, it's a lot of learning, but, you know, I think we're getting to a point now where we probably start pushing and, and getting up the front a little bit more. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for this speedway season. Are you enjoying spring car racing the more that, as you go and the more you learn about how to drive the car? Yeah, loving it now. A little bit more than when I started. When I started, it was pretty foreign and yeah. I was questioning what, what I was doing, but um, it's starting to click now, which is nice. It's all making a bit more sense and, um, you know, when the things are hooked up and, and handling how they should, they're so much fun. With that being said, how involved are you in setup? Are you just describing how the car feels or are you suggesting, hey, move the right wing wheel out, you know, those sort of specific changes? Uh, at the start, I wasn't really that involved with the setup. I was just kind of saying, you know, what the car was doing and then trying to relate back to if it was any driving stuff. Yep. Where now, you know, I've kind of got a bit of experience and kind of can um, you know throw a few setup ideas out there, and that kind of helps us you know arrive at the right setup things. So um, getting a little bit more into it, which yeah. is cool. I was just talking to one of your crew, and they were saying that you became more comfortable with the wall a couple of weeks ago here. What was that like? Um, yeah, I don't know what they mean. If they meant okay. I hit it, or if I was just running on it. But yeah, um, yeah night one we had a lot of you know dramas. And we hadn't been in the 410 for a while. I wasn't feeling that great. And then night two, yeah. it was you know more on the fence and. Um, I haven't really driven, you know, sprint cars on the fence a lot, so um, it was cool to be able to do that, and yeah, I loved it.
Cam, I think it was about uh, six quick in time trials for the heat number four. So he's getting ready for heat number four now. I think he looked really good, and as you would have seen in the interview, he did really look. Uh, he looks really good uh, in time trials, but through the center of the corner, he's just drifting up track a bit, and didn't quite have that traction where other guys did. And obviously, there's about half a second there. So uh, half a second on a track that's only you know 12 seconds around um, is quite a bit. So they've worked on a few things. I think they mucked around with shocks a bit. He also got into the wall. Uh, out of turn four on I think the last or second last lap there so they went over and checked the car a fair bit uh, they were pretty happy with it nothing really wrong with the car but he's obviously got work to do in this heat race uh, to move forward a few spots to hopefully transfer directly to the AMA let's see what happens Yeah, just off the turn. Yeah, just gotta get more. It's two, three, in, dude. 
maybe I need to pack it up a bit. So pack this back in. That will drive me up here. Yeah. We didn't get off, no. So I just tried to, we did put the other wicked wheel probably on too. I'll probably just do that. They did. The other wicked wheel would have helped too. Yeah, I'll do that. So there. So he's finished two spots behind you. Where did he finish in the heat? He was two on you, wasn't he? Well, now he was behind you for a while. In the heat? No, I think he finished behind you. Have a look. Right, so we're gearing up for the B main. Cam didn't quite make the, uh, through to the feature. He finished fourth. He had a really great start, but uh, unfortunately didn't make uh, the show. So he's got to go through the B main. They thought he was out of position eight, but they had uh, a few problems. They went and spoke to the officials, and then they, I think they said they were just going to start out of seven, and then. They decide he's going to start out at four because it goes, I think, back on where he finished in the heat race. So he doesn't have it easy though. He's going to finish in the top five, so he can't afford to lose a spot. But he's got Jock Goodyear and Matt Dumsney off the front row in front of him. And on the inside of him, on the second row, he's got Callum Williamson. So he's definitely got fast guys around him. Definitely doesn't want to lose any spots. And if anything, he can gain a couple spots to start further up for the feature race. But they did have problems with driving forward uh, in the heat race. So what they've done is they've put the bigger wicker bill on the top wing. They've also, I think, raised the front, made some uh, shock changes on the front to help weight transfer to the rear of the car. They also brought, I think, the right rear wheel in a little bit uh, to help with some side bite. So they're really just looking for some forward bite, some forward drive out of the car for this B-Main. So uh, the dash has just been out. We're about to push out for the B-Main right now. Let's see what he can do.
right, it's A-Main time here at Northline Speedway. Cam will be off the back of the A-Main, I think out of position 19, because he grabbed the second last spot out of the B-Main. They made a few changes. I think they just tightened the car up like you probably would have seen in the interview. Uh, just make a few changes and try and improve the car. you got to remember, it's 30 laps, so you want to have a good car at the end of the race. I think what works in Cam's favour is that he's used to hitting his marks in the supercar lap after lap for long races. So uh, I think that works in his favour in that he, once he can get into a groove early on, um, he can start to make some progress. But one thing that I did notice in the B-Main is that a couple of guys in front of him were moving around and then he, as he said in the interview, that was the reason why he decided to move around. So probably something he wants to maybe try and do earlier if he's got the pace and try and move through the field. But uh, as for the track, uh, they just had cars rolling around, some uh, push cars and water trucks and things like that, trying to pack down some of these grubs and stuff. I'm not sure if you can see some of the shadows over here, but uh, they're just trying to smooth out the track while they had the podium for the street stocks. But it's a main time. Hopefully Cam has a good run. Let's see what happens. swing at the car and you know we moved forward a little bit but weren't quick enough but good to make the uh, good to make the A. Um, of course we missed last week so yeah good to make the A and we'll just think about what we've got to do for tomorrow night. What would the car feel like? Did you feel like you could do what you wanted or what did you end up with? Um, nah, the car was still very free and just couldn't get the right rear to sit into the track so mm -hmm. uh, yeah way too free in and, and off and uh, it didn't matter what I did, I couldn't get it to sit down. So, here's what it is. We, um, yeah, chasing the car a lot tonight, but here's what it is. It's all part of the fun of sprint car racing. I find it interesting, I know, like, with supercars or just circuit racing, that you have to hit your marks lap after lap, and it's usually the same marks lap after lap. With sprint car racing, do you find that you have to kind of get your mind into a different mode to move around the racetrack and find different parts throughout 30 laps? The supercar, you have to be very disciplined with all your inputs and just slightly change them to suit the car where 
you know, the sprint car, you kind of have to do the same once you find like a sweet spot, but then you have to be very proactive to, you know, search for, for grip. Um, you know, if it's going up high, going low, hitting a rut, whatever it is. So it's, um, it's kind of like a supercar in the wet. You're always looking for the grip. Yeah. So um, some similarities, kind of. Yeah. Do you find that it's uh, sprint car racing can help your supercar racing? Uh, yeah, 100%. I think it can help with supercar stuff. Obviously, they're pretty, you know, raw, crazy beasts, and um, you have to be disciplined and smooth and, and do a lot of those things which you need in the supercar. So um, I think it helps, and, uh, you know, any seat time is good seat time. When Lockie passed you, did you uh, find like, or take any of what uh, he was doing in front of you to try and improve your race? Or? Um, yeah, Lockie passed me, but. He didn't really pull away from me after that. And then yeah. he kind of just sat between me and the guy in front yeah. until the course should come out. So yeah. it's kind of a little bit annoying, but that's okay. Um, you know, he was just a little bit better at center and off compared to me. And um, yeah, he did a really good job. Tom. Okay, night's over here in Darwin. Uh, Cam didn't have the greatest feature, but stayed out of trouble and managed to finish the race, which is exactly what he needs. I was talking to his crew after the feature, and he's only had 30 sprint car races, which is crazy. That's basically a, a full season here in Australia, um, not even. So to compete with some of the guys that he's competing with, uh, I think at that early stage of his sprint car racing career, you're still really trying to learn uh, how to drive a sprint car. So um, he's obviously, experience enough as far as driving a race car into knowing what he needs to work on and um, I was really interested to follow the team around tonight such a laid-back vibe and feel with those guys and has been with all of the uh, teams and stuff that we followed especially here in Australia and it's made it really enjoyable and I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, watching the videos too and learning about different teams and how they work but um, I really enjoyed working with Cam I think it's awesome what he's doing he doesn't really have to do what he's doing but he's kind of putting himself in the deep end and uh, competing um, against you know Australia's best in sprint car racing and trying to prove himself. There's probably some fans who go home tonight and probably think you know that Cam Waters guy is not very good, but the truth is is that he's actually having to go at something that he doesn't know about, and he's putting himself out there to um, make himself competitive. I kind of I guess in a way compare him a little bit to maybe what Carl Larson does um, back over in the states. So um, I think it's cool that he's kind of um, transferring fans across from supercars to sprint cars. And, and vice versa, but um, here at the track, they're actually just working the track right now for tomorrow night. They, these track crews don't ever stop. Um, and, uh, hopefully there'll be another cracker race. It was an awesome race tonight between Lockie McHugh, Stephen Lyons, Jamie Veal. At one point, I think, you know, everyone thought uh, each of those guys could have won or, or was going to win. It looked like Veal was, was gonna run through on the bottom and, and run away with it, but uh, Lockie came through on the top and and it was an awesome race, probably the best race I've seen in Australia in a while. Um, so looking forward to it tomorrow night. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.